So you can identify under extrusion pretty easily. Uh, the top one here, you cannot um, get an X-Acto knife in and the layers are really solidly bonded together. So it's, it's basically like one solid piece of plastic. Um, uh, in the other case though, you can get a, an X-Acto knife in between the layers and part them. And in addition to that, you can actually hear when you tap on the side that it's a bit more hollow sounding or it sounds like just one layer of plastic as well. Okay, so now we've, uh, we know that we have the problem. Let's figure out how to solve that problem. So originally I had my spool holder coming off the back because I'm in an enclosure here. I had it coming off of the back. The filament was curling right around and I felt like that was a possible kind of restriction. It was having trouble pulling the filament in. So I repositioned it. That had no impact on this problem whatsoever in the testing that I did. Uh, next, the nozzle. Did I have a nozzle clog? Well, this is the second nozzle that I've had on here. Uh, the first nozzle that I had, we had the exact same issue. So I raised the Z-axis to the highest point, preheated the nozzle, and attempted to clear that nozzle. All right, after that, I had the same problem. I then replaced the nozzle again with a brand new nozzle, and that did not fix the problem. So that is not the source. All right, next, do you have undersized filament? So I printed with a range of different filaments from different brands as well. So the filament itself and the size is not the problem. All right, so the next possibility I had some uh, had to do some research on was this mechanism here with the spring that applies a little bit of pressure against the uh, feeder. So the, the uh, feeder stepper motor down below here. So um, what they were saying is that the screw in here, which is a little um, cap head screw, is a little bit too tight. And when pressure is relieved, it doesn't allow the spring to completely take over and apply that pressure into onto the filament. There is also an adjustment screw right back here where you can apply a little bit more pressure uh, to the spring and that still did not do anything. So we've eliminated that as a possibility. All right, so we've eliminated all the other possibilities for the problem. Um, it seems to be in relation to how much filament is coming in um, in actuality versus how much filament the machine believes is coming in. So if we go to control, motion, transmission ratio, and the lowest one transmission ratio for the extruder, this was a default value of 93. Now you can, um, I'll put a link in the description below as far as how to actually uh, test how much filament is coming in and how to set this number. So I've done that test already and found out that 93 was much too low. Too little filament was coming in, and of course that was leading to under extrusion. All right, that seems simple enough, right? Just go ahead and change it. Uh, that's where the problem actually was. And this is where I became even more confused. Went ahead and changed those numbers. 106 is the number that works for me. Okay, you can go with that. You go back to the control and just go ahead and check make sure oh, it's still 106 great that's what you would expect turn your machine off and turn it back on that number is not 106 anymore that number is back to 93 so it still believes uh, apparently what was happening was it was saving that information to the SD card and not to the actual firmware itself within the machine and it's very misleading I thought the problem was solved right there and then it continued so that's where we need to focus this needs a firmware upgrade. And I'm not going to go into the details of the firmware upgrade itself, but what I will say is you simply download the firmware upgrade onto the SD card, put the SD card into the machine, and automatically it will upload the new firmware. And you can confirm that by going to Info, Firmware Version 2.06. Okay. So you may not see that initially uh, come up on your screen. You may need to power off and power back on. Now one other quick little thing, when I uh, first changed over the firmware, it came in in Chinese, prepare, very bottom, language selection, you can change it, um, all of the characters are going to be in a different language of course, so it's a little bit difficult to read, it looks something like that, alright, easy enough. Now when you do that, you will be allowed to go back to motion, Change the setting, 106.1 for example, go back and say storage configuration. And it'll make a little beeping noise. 
that will save that to the uh, device of uh, the machine and then it'll be good to go for the next time and one other real quick tip with this particular machine this is a half finished print and it's half finished because I jostled the extension cord a little bit and the machine lost power now this machine is supposed to power back up and allow the print to continue um, but it did not the power was like that back on and it didn't seem to recognize that there was uh, a need for that and there was no way for me to get this print started again so make sure you have a good power cord coming to your printer otherwise you may uh, run into problems like I have well guys I hope you found this video helpful if you did make sure you subscribe and like the video and if you've got some comments on um, anything within this video if you've got some other helpful comments for other people as well and problems that you've run into please make sure you put those in the section below as well and I will see you on the next one take care